How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So today we're discussing a couple injury updates. Obviously, Garrett Cole still waiting for MRI results. I'm sure the Yankees already have them. It seems as, as though they're kind of weighing uh, the different opinions of professionals to see what the rehabilitation process is going to look like. We've seen this happen many a time before. The Yankees traditionally do not give us a lot of information. Um, all we know right now is that some reporters are saying it was a precautionary MRI, but the fact of the matter, if it was precautionary why are they getting several opinions? Why are they starting to you know, get into the fine details of what this return could look like? Is it going to be a situation where they're weighing surgery or natural rehab? You know, like what we saw with DJ LeMayhew a couple of years ago or Aaron Judge. Like, do they need surgery or are they going to try to work it out on their own? Um, you know, if a small surgery will knock Garrett Cole out for two months, so be it. You know, at least we get him back at some point in the season. Right now, my focus is getting him back in 2024. It's not getting him back for opening day or whatever. It's really just at any point, if he misses even half the year and we get him back at some point, we can survive that. Our offense is good enough. We can go and trade for a guy. I know the Yankees are actively um, engaged with Dylan Cease, which we will cover in the next video. But we also want to discuss Aaron Judge, who also had an MRI on his abdominal section. He was throwing today with Juan Soto. Doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. The MRI came back clean. Seems to be just kind of an overworked type of thing, um, you know, sore in that area from taking a lot of swings this winter. You know, how are you feeling about the injuries, Ryan? Obviously, we hold our breath still on the Cole news, but knowing that Judge will be fine, I'm sure that at least that's a little bit of solace. Yeah, so the way I look at it is the situation with Aaron Judge uh, is is good. Like, it's a clean they they got they've got a clean MRI. I'm fine. You know what I mean. I, I think that Judge. I, I'm good on that. Look, we can again. We can like look at the communication and say why didn't Boone tell us this and that. And and that's a fair. I'm not trying to mock fans who are frustrated by that. That's certainly a frustrating thing. You could find that at any point in time that somebody's going undergoing an MRI or something's wrong, and we wouldn't know. Uh, and that's that's obviously frustrating. We want transparency. That's something that you know fans want to know what's going on. And I and I completely understand that. Um, but let's kind of boil it down to the main takeaway here. He underwent an MRI. He underwent testing. It, it's pretty hard to lie about testing. It's, 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 I'm pretty sure you, pretty, pretty hard to lie about that. And it came back clean. So, um, you know, he'll take that days off. I think it's the right course of action to be precautionary and kind of get a, ahead of it. You know, I kind of have this thought with Cole that, you know, I, I feel like if on one hand, the second opinions could mean that something's really wrong, but it also could mean that something isn't entirely wrong. On one hand, you could argue if something was torn, they would want to get multiple opinions, that and that. But if there was a tear of the UCL, there's no amount of opinions that, that fix a tear in the UCL, a significant tear. Kind of similar to Lucas Giolito's situation, it doesn't take long to identify a tear of a UCL. What it does take a while to determine is when it's not a tear, when it's maybe a partial tear, a small one, one that you can use PRP injections for, or inflammation, trying to identify and figure out what exactly is wrong and what's causing the issue. Kind of reminds me of Judge's toe injury where it was like three days of just not knowing what was wrong and they did testing and more testing and, you know, there was concern about would he need surgery, this and that, were we going to lose Aaron Judge for the entire season? And it turned out, obviously, he did miss a good portion of the season. He missed about a month and a half. And, you know, if you were to translate to that to pitching, I'd look more at, like, two months of, of time off. Um, but I, I, I kind of hope, and the, the idea is, as you mentioned, that he, he's, he, he's able to nurse this on his own and there isn't that need for surgery. Um, again, I, I don't know, right? We don't know. This is all speculatory talk here. Um, but I, I think that we're at the point where we're just wait and see. I, I just... I don't know. It's it's an extremely concerning situation, and it definitely defines a season. And I'm not banking on a Dylan Cease edition, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but I'm not banking on that. I'm banking on, you know, Garrett Cole's going to be back at some point, hopefully, and if not, I don't know what's going to go on with this team. So um, it, it, that's just where we're at there. But in terms of Aaron Judge, um, my, my, my concerns are eased there. When it comes to Garrett Cole, though, obviously that's the looming cloud over the Yankees. Yeah, I mean, look, the truth of the matter right now, my friends, is, you know, things were going pretty smoothly. No injury news, and in the last three days, you get Oswald Peraza, Garrett Cole, and Aaron Judge. Luke Weaver, throw him into the mix. He's fine, Aaron Boone said this morning. But what happens to the Yankees' season if 
Cole is forced to miss the whole year. I don't even want to think about that personally. I'm not going to talk about it for very long. But what I will say is this. They have no choice but to pivot and try to acquire another player who can at the very least operate as a number one. Whether it be Dylan Cease, whether it be even even Shane Bieber. I'm not going to say he's a number one, but at least you have another good mid-rotation arm to add to the mix. Um, or the Yankees say, screw it. Let's spend the freaking money and go get Blake Snell. And I think that, you know, we were hearing rumblings that Snell and the Angels were coming together on a potential deal maybe Scott Boris said hold on one just just one more second here before we push this through let's see what happens with Garrett Cole because if Garrett Cole goes down there is an insurance policy by the way for the Yankees on big players like this if Cole, Cole missed the whole season they would get insurance money from that contract and theoretically speaking you know the money that you're going to spend the extra the 110 percent over the luxury tax threshold you know Steinbrenner gets it back in insurance um, so there is a logic to play there but what I will say is something on Boris, the Yankees may be ready to enter the fold if Cole is forced to miss a significant amount of time. Um, do you think that there is reason to believe that the Yankees could re-engage in some of the free agents that could really help round out the rotation or at least supplement the loss of Cole to a degree? Snell's probably the best you're going to get, right? Um, aside from any top-level premium stars via the trade market, which doesn't seem like a probability right now or even a possibility, do you think there's a world where the Yankees say, we really don't have a choice but to go get the NL Cy Young Award winner, hope he, do, hope he maintains that quality and serves as our number one this upcoming season, and that way we at least, at the very least, we stay alive in the championship conversation? Um, do you think that that's a possibility if Cole is forced to miss a lot of time? I mean, you have to entertain it. I mean, I, don't th I still don't think that will happen. I, I don't think that... Um... The, I don't think the Yankees are going to sign Blake Snell. Like, I've been very adamant about that. I, I I mean, at least in recent weeks, you know, there was a point in time where I was like, oh, you know, maybe it'll happen. But the finances just don't make sense. It, they don't. I mean, I they, they, they don't make a lot of sense. It's hard for me to try to figure out a way to, you know, navigate through the, yeah, we'll just spend like 60 to 70 to 80 million more dollars. Uh, you know, obviously it's not on Blake Snell. Technically the hundred percent tax is a roster wide tax. So, uh, you're not, um, you can't just say that they're spending 80 million on Blake Snell. They're spending 80 million because of Blake Snell, but not specifically on him. He doesn't see the money. So uh, it's a little bit different, but the point is how Steinbrenner would have to cut a check of $80 million. And, and that enough is that's, not gonna that's just not gonna cut it you mentioned the insurance with Garrett Cole you know maybe that'll make them a little more incentivized to spend money but I mean even then right like I I don't know they don't have to go draft picks and if you kind of look at like the team like do you want to go draft picks international free agent money I guess that stuff doesn't matter if you're desperate for a guy who can help you and, and that's a fine uh thought process to have uh but again Alex like why, where, I just don't know why that would change. I don't know why they would spend $80 million. I, I'm not saying they should or shouldn't. I'm just saying I don't foresee it. I, I don't. Maybe something changes, but what I'm praying for is we find out Cole has elbow inflammation. It is something where he just has to get shut down for a bit. He ramps back up. He gets on the mound. He looks good. He feels good. Life is good. And we can get back to just kind of put this behind us. I obviously understand it's a possibility that's not the case and that in that situation, you know, we have to press that panic button and, and figure out what's going to go on with the Yankees after this. But I don't know, like it's, there's a long year. Uh, we'll have time to kind of, you know, see at the deadline what goes on. Obviously, regardless of what happens with Cole or how long he's out, the, the pressure on Rodon, Stroman and Schmidt to, to, to perform is, is I mean, and, and Cortez, excuse me, is insurmountable. These guys need to step up. If you ask me who's going to be the opening day starter, I'd say Stroman. I mean, he, he was the opening day starter last year for the Cubs. Um, you know, Rodon, not to say Rodon can't handle it, but I feel like pushing Rodon up a day, uh, and saying, all right, you've got a day less of rest. Considering what happened last time with you know him shortening his rest uh, in, in that start against the Rays, I don't know if his body will react well, and I don't want to test that. I think Stroman's a little better equipped for it. I don't know. A Alex, I think we're just at the point where I don't think Blake Snell's happening. If they get somebody, it'll be a trade market, but I don't also think they're going to get Dylan C. So you kind of just pray Cole's healthy. That's really it. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. You know, right now we're holding our breath. Obviously, we'll get you guys updated on any further news regarding the Cole situation. And, you know, seemingly everybody else is okay. So at least we have that to kind of lean on. But um, plenty of spring training ball left. Plenty of time for the Yankees to continue going through their progress and their process, rather. Um, and getting some of these other arms like Nestor Cortez and Carlos Rodon up to speed. Right now, I think somebody, maybe it was um, Brendan Cuddy or something, suggested that Marcus Stroman would be the expected starter on opening day um if 
things trend, you know, the way that they are right now, which Garrett Cole probably will not be available. So maybe we could see a Strowman opening day situation where, you know, that certainly wasn't our ideal situation by any means. But, you know, you got to live with what you got. And this is what we got. So, my friends, as always, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.